Tonight on The Local Live, village, town, and county officials joined the Larch Ma and Mamaroneck League of Women Voters debate. The Memory Project is a local artist's love letter to her community. A Mamaroneck resident celebrates her 100th birthday and shares her secrets to longevity. Our community gets into the Halloween spirit. And finally, on tonight's roundtable, medium Angela Dupree will be doing on-air readings. These stories and more coming up. Good evening, it's Thursday, October 26. I'm Kyle McKenzie and welcome to The Local Live. The League of Women Voters hosted a candidates forum last night facing off for Norman Rosenblum and incumbent Catherine Parker for county legislator. Tom Murphy sparred with George Magridigian for Mamaroneck Village Mayor. Maria DeRosa debated Nora Lucas for Village Trustee. Two incumbents and one newcomer running unopposed in the town of Mamaroneck participated as well. Remember, you can watch the full forum on lmctv.org or watch it this weekend on Verizon Channel 36 or Cablevision Channel 75. A local artist is leaving her impact through a visual aid and art installation coming to the Bamaranac Artist Guild this coming November. Earlier this afternoon, I sat down with her to learn more about the project and how it is resonating within the community. Christine Aaron has been a resident of Larchma and Mamaroneck community for over 32 years. Awarded a grant from Arts Westchester this past January, she's now putting the funds to good use by giving back and creating the Memory Project. And so what I asked was that anybody who had any connection with Larchma and Mamaroneck to contribute a memory to the project. And there are a lot of easy ways to do it. You could write on paper that I provided, you could call and leave a, an audio recorded memory I had the materials at about 12 different spots in Larchmont and Mamaroneck so they could come at any point, add their memory then. And then I also had gatherings. Memories of every kind from community members of every age started to come in quick. Despite some initial participant skepticism, Christine was pleasantly surprised at what people revealed. So I think there's a real need and want for people to listen to each other and hear each other's stories, but they have to feel like it's a safe thing to do. And in an age dominated by smartphones and smartwatches, returning to simplicity seemed to do the trick. I think with social media, there's this feeling like everything's out there. But this, I think, handwriting the memories or recording in your own voice, I think, felt very intimate for people. And there's a need for people to connect in a different way. What wasn't anticipated was the reach the Memory Project would have, both by local community members and visitors alike. I, I just think in general it's very important to share your memories with people. Memories are experiences that we take throughout our lives and I just think that um, you know, rather than a gift, a memory is something that you hold on forever and it's, it's, it stays with you. I think memories um, really shape us uh, and are a lot of who we each are as a person. A truly neat project helping a community continue to be grounded and connected. And our thanks to Christine Aaron. You can visit the visual and audio art installation at the Mamaroneck Artist Guild, located at 126 Larchmont Ave in Larchmont, November 7th through November 12th. Memories in this exhibit will also be preserved online. To learn more, head to their website at thememoryproject.space. Village of Mamaroneck resident Eleanor Boygian celebrates her 100th birthday and the local live caught up with her. Reporter Kat Galliano has the story. This is Eleanor Boyagian, one of the oldest seniors at Mamaroneck Towers. She communicates with hand gestures, smiles, and through her eyes. After a high fever at a young age, she lost her ability to speak and hear. When I first met Eleanor, um, you know, we instantly instantly liked each other and uh, one of the things that um, that I think that she picked up from me was the enthusiasm that I had about wanting to communicate with her so she bought me a a sign card and I still have it uh, and that's how I started communicating with her. Eleanor's disability has not stopped her as a factory worker and a young widow she raised her kids and put them through college 
Today, the Mamarane community and all who know her continue to celebrate her historic centennial birthday. We had a beautiful celebration for her here in the community room and uh, Mayor Norm Rosenblum uh, issued a proclamation along with the supervisor, Nancy Selig. Thankful for her mother's longevity, Eleanor's daughter, Diana, shares her experience about senior and elderly caring. It's certainly not a very easy task uh, taking care of an elderly parent, but what does help is going to a support group. Uh, my mother attends a social adult daycare center. You kind of have to take it on a light note. You can't take very, you know, take everything so seriously. Um, and just be thankful that they're still here. I mean, to me, she is really a beautiful lady, and uh, it's been a pleasure to be able to serve. Coming up next, we'll be taking your calls as medium Angela Dupree does live readings. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to the Roundtable. I'm Maura Carlin. I'm joined by medium Angela Dupree, who's going to take your uh, calls um, and connect you with your loved ones. We can do it by phone and uh, we'll try it by emails. Just be patient because we only have one phone line. Angela, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. Let's start by, can you tell me what is mediumship? What do you do as a medium? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of everything, um, but mediumship is really about the ability to connect us, you know, with the higher levels of those of us that we've lost people, canines, cats that have transitioned to the other side. Um, so it's a way of when you elevate your mind and your energy to be able to bring through any messages that they have, you know, for us. How did you get started in this? Um, I wasn't really in tune to it when I was much younger. Every house that we lived in, we were always aware of spirit. Um, but my mother was uh, very colorful, so didn't take it that seriously when we would see spirits. But it really was um, when she passed away in 97. And I actually saw her a few times when she passed um, that I had to try to make sense of it. So I started doing tarot cards first and then through some workshops um, locally. You know, then I got involved in learning how to do mediumship. And did you realize that you'd really had this gift all along? I didn't really consider it a gift because we lived a little bit of chaos. We were always moving place to place. Okay. So I didn't really see it as a gift until I started connecting with it on a one-on-one -on -one basis with people. So as we wait for our callers, what do you do when we get someone on the line or an email comes in? Well, I'd like to say that it's when the phone call comes in, but a lot of times spirit already has it pre-staged. Well, just on like that, we already have a caller. Oh. <laughs> there okay, we go. Well, they're, they're setting us up for success. <laughs> caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Caller, are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, what's your name? And go ahead and then ask your question. Um, my name is Moral, and I was wondering if she could connect with my dad. Okay. Um, first, before I connect with your um, dad, I just want to give you part of the message first before I connect directly with him. So okay. I, don't, I don't know where you've been or what you've tried to transition through in the past year and a half. But what mm -hmm. I feel like with his energy, he's showing me a hook of like you need to really push through in the next three months because January is really when the doors are going to open for you. So everything you've done right now is right. Um, so just to make sure I'm connecting with him and not a uh, grandfather. Um, your father's features either look a little bit... Um, darker to me, so either his skin is a little bit olive or with darker hair similar to yours. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how long ago he passed because he still feels like he's very present with you. And when I look at how he did transition, um, he's showing me himself to be under pressure. But what's odd about it, he's not showing the pressure from the torso and up. He's showing me that there's definitely some head pressure. So there's a feeling with him where he's not 100% sure of what's happening with him when he transitions. Okay. Um, can you understand what he's talking about with the head pressure? Um, I, I'm not really sure, no. Okay. Do you also have one son or one child? I'm the only child. No. Do you have any children? No. Hmm. 
I don't know if that's something that's in your plans coming up because I'm looking at you and then he's talking about there being a plus one. Um, Maybe my mom. No, it's not like that. This is some somebody that's definitely going to be very close to your energy that you're going to be either helping to take care of or that you could also be helping to take care of. But this isn't okay. with your mom. Um, okay. But your father is not showing that he's transitioned that long ago. And yeah. he show, this is, still feels very fresh to him. Um, I don't see his height being very great because I'm almost 5'7". So maybe mm -hmm. I'm looking a little bit up higher to him, maybe like 5'9". But he feels comfortable. Like this is not somebody that I would be uncomfortable approaching. Um, okay. But he is just showing with you to keep your feet going. There's something that you're working on that you're kind of like either stuck in the mud or you're waiting for a sign from him to make sure that you're doing the right thing. So okay. somehow, however you're sleeping, he's talking about making a correction because you're either... I don't think you're sleeping as deeply as you think that you're sleeping because he's showing that the room that you're sleeping in, it does feel very dark when you go to sleep. But he's saying that when you go to sleep, you may be asking for a connection, but he wants you to do it throughout the day rather than at nighttime. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so to please try to do that, because I do. Your father is learning a lot better on the other side how to communicate rather than mm -hmm. his skills communicating while he's here. Okay, I'm going to have to end the thank you caller because we have more oh, calls you. coming in. I hope that helped morale. But definitely a lot of love from him. I just want to throw that in there. Okay. Um, we have another caller. So, caller? Oh. Okay. Call's coming in right now. Okay. And we'll just take a second till we get it on no the problem. air. Um, but you seem to, I'm, get, I'm getting uh, <laughs> indications that it's almost ready. Um, you were getting an awful lot of information. Well, you kind of have an outline built. Uh -huh. So as I step into their energy, it's almost like you're kind of walk, I feel like I walk my body physically into their body and try to take a look at things from their perspective. So then you're looking at their appearance, you're feeling their height, you're, I always ask them, what are you trying to do to help this person? What can they do to connect with you better? That's why he was showing me her sleeping. Right. Pattern is a little bit off because a lot of times people ask for communication from their mother or father or people that they're missing. But if you don't get the right sleep, they're not able sometimes to have that visit with you. You know, because for me, it's really not a dream. It's more of a visit. Okay. So they can't have the visit if we're not actually resting. So if they give the message that they want this person to rest, you know, then they touch in and ask me. Okay. Well, we have a caller. Okay. Another caller. Um, caller, you're on the air. Hello? Hi, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, I, okay. Um, well, my name is Cindy, and I'm calling from Pelham, and uh, I'd like to know... Um, if you can reach Paul for me. Okay. Um, well, I do have Paul here for you, but I have another male that's going to be side by side with him. Okay. Um, so the male that I want to connect with first feels like that when he passes away. This comes as a surprise because I'm not, I'm not ill beforehand. So it feels like there's a physical deterioration of an organ, so possibly a cancer or something fails on me. Does that make sense with Paul or with another male to you? With Paul. Okay. Um, don't know what your living conditions are, but I feel like he's, his hands look kind of strong to me because he's kind of putting his hands over mine like he's really just trying to uh, uproot you. But this is yeah. literally, like I want to take you from where you are and we need to just move on from this space um, and he's also saying that you're a lot better than what you, where you think you are. And I'm not telling you what to do with people around you, but he's saying we need to kind of take a scissor and cut some of your circle away um, because he's saying he absolutely needs you to get to your next location. Um, there is definitely a nervousness with him before he passes, and he wants you to delete that from your memory. Um, does that make sense? Because he's showing oh. up. 
total sense. Thank you. So he's shown before he passed, you were so concerned about what was happening with him, and he's nervous, and he's showing himself almost like in New Orleans at, like, the Mardi Gras, <laughs> where he's, like, just, you know, like, the big band music and, like, let's yeah. go eat something. And with that eating, I just want to squeeze in there. He's saying, like, you need to really nourish yourself, and he's telling me just to be bossy with you and tell you to do that. <laughs> Like, I want to boss you around and tell you, like, you need to knock it off. He's okay. Yes, he was very nervous before he passed. He's not there right now. Good. And he's taken the exact advice I gave you, and he's eliminated some people before that he was very worried of how they looked at them, how p other people looked at him. And he's saying that's the best thing that he did, and he's very happy of how you helped to release him because he's showing you either with white oh, birds thank or... You or white flowers of how you just kind of sent him. You were just like, let's just go. Let's go yeah. have yep. fun. So a, a tremendous amount of love for you. And he is just saying to please be aware he's with you all the time in a car. And you sometimes drive somewhere where you're making right turns on red and you're not supposed to. <laughs> And on that note, thank you, Cindy. That's, so, that's fantastic. Oh, my gosh. I so, so appreciate this. You're welcome. And a lot of love from him. So I thank you. Oh, thank you. That that makes me feel so much better. <laughs> and you that, should. You deserve it. Thank you for your thank call, you. Cindy. How I'm can... sorry. I just need a second with that oh, one. Oh, okay. Gotta... Go ahead. Cause when you really people, felt that one. When people come in that close and with that much emotion, like it almost makes me want to cry. Okay. You know, the amount of love. He really just wanted to jump in and fix everything for us. So I just... What do you hope readings, how they help people who are still living? What are you hoping for that? And I'm probably end up you know, interrupting you. I think sometimes it helps people. It helps us subconsciously on a spiritual level before we're even consciously aware of how it helps us. Do you know what I mean? It's like getting a healing without knowing that, without going to a doctor. It's like somebody putting their hands on you. So a lot of times... When people sit down with me and I'm working with spirit, I consider it a blessing that they want to talk to me. But then I look at it like spirit wants this person to know. They know more than I do. They know what it takes to help this person to get to their next destination. So that's really what I feel like it helps people to do. You know, let's focus on the past. Let's look at it a little bit. But what do I need to do to get to the second step? And do you feel that the spirits generally want to help? as opposed to hurt? I think spirit always wants to help, although people will connect with their original personality when they're earthbound. So sometimes they will get a little bossy or they will get a little um, talking it, about themselves. But overall, that's what they want to do is help. And it's helping you and it's helping them at the same time. And we have another caller. Okay, let's All go. right, caller, you're on the air. Who are you, what's your name <coughs> and who are you trying to connect with? Caller, are you there? Caller? Well, caller, are you there? Are you there? All right, we'll, we'll try Hello? to... Hello? Yes, are you there, caller? Yes. Hi, what's your name and who are you trying to connect with? My name's Christina. I'm trying to connect with my dad. Okay. Um, before I connect with him, I'm not sure if right now if you're... There's a female that wants to just jump in really quick with you first who says you either helped to take care of her before she passed or you gave some kind of caretaking. Can you place her? No. Okay. What is your father's name? My dad's name? Yes. Angelo. Okay. Um, I will tell you first, this is not somebody who automatically trusts me right away because he's kind of trying to put me a little bit to the test. Um, but I feel like what he's shown me is before passing that um, he's either questioning how people took care of him, how they treated him, like he's overseeing what the doctors and the diagnosis are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So as he's doing that, what he's saying is that with you, he doesn't want you to overdiagnose what happens with him. There is definitely a feeling with him where he did want to push for more time while he's here. But he's still yeah. saying that he's definitely around you all the time. And I don't know if he hands-on, like, helped to decorate your house or he had hands-on in your property, but he makes me feel like he's very much part of your home. Can you understand that? He built the house with his family when he came to his country. Oh, thank yeah. you. So he's just saying he's very hands-on it. 
because I could see him in your house with you. And do you have like a like a toddler or somebody's two or three or two or three? Yeah, kids? I have a, a six year old and a nine year old. OK. Um, I know I only have limited time here, but he is saying that with the nine year old, give that one a chance. Not saying that you're not, but he's saying you're going to be very surprised with that nine year old, how they turn things around by the time that they're 12. So if somebody's telling you differently, there's no way. So your father is definitely very hands-on with your family. And with the little one, your father is showing that he does connect more with that one when they're sleeping because that one feels a little bit more sensitive. And he is just saying to you, please don't wear your heart on your sleeve. Don't know what's happening with you personal life or work life wise. But he doesn't want anybody to um, hurt you, trying just to keep you safe. And wherever you are living, he is just saying there's never going to be an issue. If you ever want to move from there, you're welcome to it. But he's saying that if you absolutely want to stay there, then he will make sure that you get the means to be able to stay there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Christina, yeah. thank you very much for calling. I hope that helped. And we are just going to take a quick break. Okay. And we'll be right back with more readings for you. So just keep calling, folks. We are the Creative Inspirational Leaders. We invite you all to come down to our Haunted House fundraiser, which will take place on October 27th from 6 p.m. to midnight. All proceeds will go to victims in Puerto Rico and Mexico. For more information, follow us on our social media or call us at 914-835-1512. Thank, Thank you! you. Welcome back. We've got... Angela Dupree here, taking your um, your calls and giving readings. She's a medium. Um, we, I wanted to ask you a question, but we have a caller, so we'll okay. let the caller go first. Sounds caller, good. Caller, you're on the air. Oh. Okay. Um, have you ever done a reading that spooked you? Yes, I have. And um, I was doing a reading for a young woman, and as I spoke about a niece that she had that passed away, I felt like the niece um, had passed away in a bunk bed. And what happened, the niece was very little. She was about seven or eight years old. And she actually didn't pass away in the bunk bed. When I saw her close to the ceiling, it was because she wound up hanging herself. Oh. And that one took me, it took me a couple of weeks to adjust from that because I thought I was seeing it one way, not realizing that. So that did kind of shake me a little bit because she was so young. Um, and it was so explicitly obvious of what happened to her. And I think when it comes to kids, you know, there's definitely a different sensitivity right. there. Right. Do we have our caller ready to go? Okay. All right, caller. You're on the air. What's your name and who are you trying to reach? Caller? Hello. Hello. Yes, caller, you're on the air. What's your name and who are you trying to reach? Marianne, I'm trying to reach my dad. Okay. Okay. So, first, can you understand with him why if he's showing me that he's so happy to get his mobility back? So, there's e either an issue with one leg or both? No. Um, I'm having a problem hearing you, though. Okay, you can't hear me? Hello, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Were you able to hear what I had said? No, actually no. I'm not, can you still hear us? I, I said no, I, you caller. said something, but I couldn't no hear what you said to me. Okay, well while we wait, let me ask you what some of the maybe strangest things you've heard or learned during a reading. Well, probably one of the strangest things that I've learned is that people can materialize at any time. You know, I was doing a, sometimes I do a short meditation before a reading. So where I lived before, as I'm meditating, I was directed to open my eyes. And I saw a uh, home delivery oil truck drive down the road, park in front of me. It's not really here because it's definitely a little bit transparent. And I saw a gentleman come out and he showed me his uniform. And I said, okay, you're, a, you know, you're an oil man, like you deliver oil? 
and he just got back in the truck and drove away. And my clients that were coming an hour later, when I bought that up, it turned out to be her uncle who had passed. And I had never seen that before. In meditation, it was one thing. But I had never seen it like during the daylight hours where the person was right there waiting to talk to their and loved ones. And came before yeah. the person you were yep. going to do the reading for. They sometimes come before. I've just never seen them actually like drive a vehicle and, <laughs> and show up like that and look so real. Um, ha, what, have you ever gotten a reaction from someone who, you, uh, a living person, um, th that was sort of the, really not what you expected, or the reverse of it, or it had an adverse effect on them? Um, yes, I did a reading for a young lady. This was um, early on when I had first started, and there was a gentleman waiting in a chair. He wouldn't talk during her entire reading, you know, that I was recording. And at the end, I finally gave him an opportunity to speak up. And it turned out to be her father who had passed 20 years earlier. He had her little cat who had passed with him. When I bought him up, she got really mad. And she said, I don't care anything about him. I don't want to talk to him. And I said, well, can I just tell you something really quick from him? And she said, yes, but it has to be within 10 seconds. So I told her he really wants to apologize. He's saying that he did get every consequence that was coming to him. And she said, I really don't care because he, was, he had abused her and her sister for years. So okay. she did get angry. He did get his little point in there. But, you know, it was something I don't know how she right. digested that information afterwards. But, yeah, she did get angry. She didn't want to hear from him. Interesting. We have a question. Um, what do you say about seeing your deceased loved ones in your dreams? Um, should we be alert? Does it mean anything? Well, for myself, and there's a lot of opinions out there, the way I tell the difference between a dream and a visit is when it's really that person in spirit for me on my end, you wake up emotionally feeling tired or you feel an emotional connection. You might wake up a little bit sad. Sometimes I've woken up with you know, tears on my face because I knew I was there. A dream sometimes can be a little bit distorted. You know, you might dream of an old memory. You went to a deli or you went to a store. But I always pay attention to a dreams or a visit, okay. especially because they can only communicate with you telepathically. It's not going to be a lot of mouth movement or you being able to hear them. So you have to tune in up here. So that's what I say. Go by how you feel when you woke up, and I would pay attention to it. But what about the actual dream? Is, are we supposed to learn something from the actual dream? Yeah, you are supposed to learn something from the actual dream, but interpreting it is a little bit rough. So what I recommend to people all the time is repeat that dream to someone else and see what the feeling is that you get inside. So, so it's the feelings that are really... Yeah, it's the feelings that they're trying to convey to you. I would say pay attention to it. But if you go into the emotions too much, you're interpreting your own feelings. Okay, so it's a fine line. Yeah, there's a fine line. So I say go by how you woke up. Okay. We have a caller. Okay. So caller, um, are you there, caller? I'm here. Okay, you're on the air. Tell us your name and who you'd like to connect with. I, uh, my name is Marianne, and I'd like to connect with my dad. Okay, so you tried calling before. Yes, I did. Okay, well, this is a much better connection. Okay. Can you just tell me brief? what is your father's name? Giuseppe. Okay. Um, he is making me aware of himself and another woman with him who feels either like a grandma or a very loving woman with him. Okay. Um, he's also saying that he's very good-looking and well-traveled. So that's, okay, how, that's, 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 that's how he's showing himself because he just threw the suit on, the clothes, the nice cologne. The first thing that he wants to just let you know is, please don't remember him, how he looked when he passed. Okay. He wants you to take that date and go back five or ten years. So okay. he makes me feel like this condition affected him in a way where his color and his skin texture was not the same. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. I don't know what you are looking forward to next year, but He's literally jumping in the air. I don't know if this is something he would have done when he's here, because when he's here, he's showing himself to be more grounded than just being all excited. But okay. he's talking about you in April and May, either like a graduation or um, like getting a certificate, or there's just a very big deal that's coming up from you next year in April or May. But he's so happy that you finally got everything wrapped up. Um, and he's more proud of you than what you might think. 
because somehow he's showing like you might have felt um, either some sibling rivalry with you and a brother or kind of wondering was he really happy with what you did. But he's saying absolutely like you're very like business minded and direct. Does that make sense? Somewhat, yeah. Uh -oh. I think we've lost Marianne, but... Oh. I, no, I have you guys. Oh. I can hear you. Oh, you can okay. hear us. Sorry. Okay. Did you understand that last part of the message I was saying? Sort of. I mean, yeah. Um, and he is just saying that before he passed, there was two conditions with him. Because he's saying that whatever happens to him that caused him to pass, to transition, he's saying that he actually got an extension because two or three years before that, something had almost happened to him which would have caused him to transition earlier. So he's okay. just saying he did push forward. Um, you know what I mean? To be able to get more time. Yes. Okay, that, that makes sense So, a lot. you know, he's saying don't forget, like, he, sa he is saying that you are more direct and you can push forward with whatever you want. But really, whatever you have on your plate for April and May next year, this is going to get you in a much better position financially. Just it's going to help your entire household. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for calling, Mary, and I hope that helped you. Angela, Thanks. we're out of time, but I wanted to make sure that okay. you can give everyone your contact information in case people want to reach out sure. to you. Sure. Um, first is my website. It's called meetingswithspirit.com. Okay. And then the phone number that they can reach me at is 203-538-5423. And Meetings with Spirit is also my Facebook page as well. Thank you so much for oh, joining welcome. us. People really enjoyed this. Thank you. And you stay tuned because we'll be back in a moment with more community stories. Welcome back to The Local Live. I'm Steve Anastas. And I'm Ian Sachs. The Section 1 boys soccer playoffs are well underway, and we have not one, but two classics to take a look at. Let's start at Rhinec High School, where the fourth-seeded Panthers hosted number 13 Westlake in the first round of the Class B bracket. And this one much closer than it looked on paper. Let's pick it up in the second half. Game sc still scoreless. John Cassis puts up a corner kick that hits the inside post and bounces back out inches away from breaking the scoreless tie. Later on, the Panthers earn a free kick from 25 yards out, and Cassis uses that bending kick to his team's advantage. They lead 1-0 with just four minutes left. Just a minute later, Gerardo Cicillo with a free kick for Westlake from about the same spot as Cassis, and it takes a leaping save from Tom Birmingham to preserve the Panther lead. On the ensuing corner kick, a point-blank opportunity for, for Westlake's Liam Gibbons, and Birmingham is just able to get in the way to turn it aside. With time winding down, Rynek has a free kick from about 55 yards out. Thomas Crook blasts it into the box, where it somehow finds the head of Jack Sheldon, sending the fans into pandemonium and clinching the win for the home team. The Panthers would go on to defeat Putnam Valley 2-0 in the quarterfinal, to set up a semifinal bout on the road against league rival Blindbrook. And meanwhile, the number three seed Mamaroneck Tigers easily handled Ossining in the first round of the double-A bracket by a score of three to one, advancing to the quarterfinals where they would face a league rival in the number six seed White Plains Tigers. And we picked this one up in the second half following an, uh, another scoreless first Four minutes in, it's a quick breakaway for White Plains' Carl Fisher. He draws out Mamaronek goalie Max Vicinelli and places a perfect shot that ricochets off the far post and in, giving White Plains a 1-0 lead. On the next possession, Mamaronek looking to counter. Ian Lamas sends in a corner kick that finds the head of Liam O'Reilly, but freshman goalie Thomas Pisapia deflects it off the crossbar, preserving the lead. Later on, Noah Patrick's header sets up Reed Sakakini for what could have been the play of the year. Unfortunately, his gorgeous attempt at a bicycle kick that would have tied the game sails wide. Still later, Mamaronik earns a free kick from 30 yards out, but unfortunately, the officials stop play to reposition the defense, and in the confusion, Lamas kicks it before the ball 
is in play and restarted, negating a shot on goal that would have given Mamarinik a pivotal corner kick. That would be Mamarinik's last scoring chance, and they dropped the quarterfinal by a score of one to nothing. So the Tigers finished the season with a record of 12 and four with two ties, but fall short of their goal of claiming a sectional championship. Well, that'll do it for this week in local high school sports, but the playoffs aren't over yet. Tune in next week for more playoff action. For the local live sports, I'm Steve Anastas. And I'm Ian Sachs. Now back over to you, Kyle, for more community stories. Ian and Steve, thank you. Now, this week in the spotlight, we highlight the 2017 Ragamuffin Parade in the village of Larchmont that took place last Saturday, and our little Lindsley was there. Tell us everything, Lindsay. How was it? It was amazing experience for me. I had lots of fun, and so many people, believe it or not, came to our LMC TV booth and talked to me. Without further ado, making her debut as our youngest reporter, here is Lindsley Berrios. Let's take a look at her story. Welcome to the 2017 Ragamuffin Parade. My name's Inslee Barrios. It's Halloween! Ready to have some fun? So stay tuned. Every year, the Village of Larchmont Recreational Department and the Larchmont Firefighters organize a parade where kids and families come to show off their Halloween costumes and have a blast. What are you for Halloween? AJ. Oh, can you show the camera your costume? Can you turn around? Are you excited today? Yeah. What do you like about Halloween? Dressing up. I got a chance to speak with the mayor of Larchmont, Lorraine Walsh, and I loved her outfit. What are you for Halloween? Uh, I'm a corpse bride. I just dug myself out of the grave today. <laughs> what do you think has changed over the years at this event? Well, the crowds have gotten a lot bigger. Um, that's for sure. And um, I think we just, we've added more community involvement. But this Halloween parade was not only for the kids. Some adults decided to join the fun. Let's watch these families and how they customize their looks. How are you for Halloween today, this year? I'm Winnie the Pooh to compliment Tigger too. At the end of the parade, everybody joins the dance floor. The Ragamuffin Parade 2017 was officially a success. Sadly, it's coming to an end, but I had a blast and I hope everyone had a blast too. So on the count of three guys, one, two, three. Happy Halloween! You lucky viewers, you get to meet me, Delmonica from Terror TV. Stay tuned for more of the local live. It's much better than the non-local, not alive programming out there. Trust me, I know. Up next, we'll find out more about crystals and their healing powers with Amanda Rachel Garcia, founder of Crystalline Cure. Welcome back to The Local Live, I'm Kat Galliano. Do you carry crystals with you for good energy? Or are you one of those who rolls their eyes at the idea? Crystals have been used by ancient, ancient civilizations for millions of years and are still being used now. Today we have Amanda Rachel Garcia, crystal healer and founder of Crystal and Cure, who will teach us more about the healing properties of crystals and maybe even sway some of you non-believers. Amanda Rachel, thank you so much for being here with us. Tell me, how did you get into crystals? Well, it all started when I was seven years old. My parents brought me into a scientific toy store, and I saw this crystal mineral set, and that was it. I was hooked ever since. <laughs> so tell me, uh, let's get straight to the point. Uh, how do crystals heal? And give us an example. I want to I wanna kind of play with these. Absolutely. Okay. So it all works with energy. And of course, the strongest energy there is, is heart-based love. So what we do is we take a crystal, just as so. You can pick up one up right there. Hold it in your dominant hand. Now, okay. this is your giving, right? You're giving this energy. And from your heart, we, we take deep breaths. 
and allowing it to flow into the crystal. Mm. And once after a while of this deep circular breathing, we switch it into our non-dominant hand or mm. our receiving. And thus so, with another deep breath, we're able to assimilate the properties of the crystal or frequency that works with the visible light spectrum into our aura or electromagnetic field. Oh, amazing. Yes. Now, for someone just getting into crystals, where do you buy these? And how do you pick the right one for you? Absolutely. So the best place I recommend to get crystals is Crystals on the Rocks in Nyack, New York. It is by far the most amazing crystal store, and I'm so blessed to be able to work there. Um, and the one thing is that if a crystal feels really heavy upon trying to pick it up, just put it down. It's not for you. Admire it from afar. But the crystal should actually kind of float to you huh. and have, it's like a calling. Great. Um, so this one kind of called for me from the beginning. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about this one? Absolutely. So this is rose quartz. And rose quartz. Actually, I think I'm wearing rose quartz today. Oh, you today. are. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> So it's for self-love, it cools tempers, and it's just to be just gentle and bubbly. Okay, <laughs> I feel like that's me. <laughs> for those of you who, uh, who have crystals, is there a protocol of how to take care of them? Do you need to charge them? I've heard of words like cleansing. Like, Tell me a little bit about that. Absolutely. So the best way to cleanse your crystals from any negative energy that has been absorbed by them is sage or palo santo. And sage actually kills 94% of airborne bacteria. And sage, you can just, where do you buy sage and Palo Santo to cleanse? Again, any metaphysical store or crystal okay. shop. Perfect. Absolutely. And lastly, since crystal sort of called to you, can you gift them? Is, is, is there a white, right way to gift crystals? Is it, you know? Absolutely. So whenever you gift a crystal, you want to just hold it in your dominant hand again, and you want to give, give that energy. intention, that loving to it. Send it off. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Just like that. Oh, that's a perfect way to end our segment. Thank you so much, Amanda Rachel, for being with us. I feel so enlightened with all this knowledge that I kind of want to run home and take care of my own crystals. So stay tuned for more community <laughs> stories coming up. Now it's time for Pet Rescue's Pet of the Week. There are new arrivals in the kitty cottage at Pet Rescue. These little guys are shy because they are brand new to the world. So go adopt one today and grow with you and your family. If you're not looking for a cat but always wanted a four-legged friend, how about a hound dog? Samson is about 18 months old. He is very sweet and friendly. He likes people and other dogs, and most importantly, he likes to smell and play. To adopt these cute kittens or Samson the Hound, or to see what other pets are available, go to ny-petrescue.org. We always welcome new volunteers and interns, and we love hearing from you, our viewers. Send us an email to the local live at lmctv.org. Thank you so much for watching our show. That's all for tonight. I'm Kyle McKenzie. See you next week for a new episode of the local live and have a happy Halloween.